Okay, hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about another episode of Hamefura. If you cannot tell, my emotions are kind of in flux right now, but before we get into the reason why, let's go ahead and give a big thank you to those of you who shared last week's Hamefura video over on Twitter. At Janime, at Fiery Kathy, at Adler Mayor One, at Blue Rose Enigma, at Anzoff97, at Puppeteer of Deeth, at Bubble Lubber, at Bahar1182, at Matt87Eagle, and at DarkfirePlayer4. Thanks so much for sharing last week's video over on Twitter, everybody. And if you too would like to have your name shouted out in next week's Hame for a video, then be sure to share this video around on the internet and then tag me at Jojo Talks Much over on Twitter, and I will be sure to shout your name out in next week's video. Now that said, like, comment, subscribe, support Maria. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and get into this. I don't have as much time to record this as I normally do since I'm gonna be doing a podcast in, oh, I don't know, 15 friggin' minutes. So I am going to have to steamroll through this episode, which is unfortunate because this is the episode that I found myself the most emotionally attached to. Now, you guys know that I love me some Hamefura. It is up there as one of the shows of the season. And this is, regardless of the delays, a very strong season. So the fact that Hamefura is so high up the list for me, that's really saying something. It is genuinely such a good show, but I was not emotionally prepared for what this episode was about to like sucker punch me with even just the beginning right we we open with maria and bakarina and they're they're studying hard or are they hardly studying you tell me but you see the two of them basically studying in the student council room and it is adorable as hell you just see them kind of like chit chatting uh, maria gives Katarina some sweets. That will be important. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to be important, but that is an important key plot point. The fact that Maria gives Katarina these these sweets and Katarina is always so like surprised or uh, Katarina is like so in love with the sweets that Maria is always surprised. In fact, now that I think about it, oh damn, now that I sat down to record and I and I really think about it, when Maria had like the, the, the muffins from the last episode and they fell everywhere and she was so surprised that Katarina went crazy for them, it makes so much more sense now why she was so shocked, right? Because for Katarina, it's like, what, you're this excellent, like, baker. Like, you, you shouldn't be surprised that people love your sweets. They're so good. But to to Maria, like, she never had that. Okay, we'll get into it in a second. <laughs> I have so many thoughts. Okay, uh, so, yeah, we see them studying. Really cute. And again, setting up stuff that's going to happen later on in the episode. The other thing we got to talk about is this man. <sighs> this man is serious. This man... Serious Deek. <laughs> oh, Serious Deek. Anyway, uh, Serious Deek has uh, quite the fan club. Quite the fan club indeed. A bit of a surprise, like, because he's basically, as Katarina points out, he was like a bit player in the game. He was a bit player in the original Otome game that this world she is inhabiting is based off of. He is wasn't really like one of the main suitors or anything, he's just like a secondary character, but now that Katarina is getting a better look at him, his fan club's bigger than Nicole's. The dude is a total beast when it comes to like filling out paperwork and, and doing his studies and everything. He like the, the mere fact that they mentioned that he's outdoing Nicole was a complete shock to me. And there, there's this moment that I can't help but feel is gonna have some kind of ram uh, ramification later on. And it's this moment to like, at, it, this is where we leave the student council room at the beginning of the episode. And Katarina says like, hey, serious, like just so you know, it, like your tea, it, it, it's a, it has a really gentle flavor. And she smiles and leaves. But Sirius is like, makes this like weird face. Like he's like, uh, okay. And he like just watches her leave and he makes this face that I'm like, I can't read what that face is. Like normally I can read the character's emotions in this show really well because they're always either over the top with emotion or just like fun chibi faces. So the fact that Sirius made a face that I was like, I don't know what that scene was, but the fact that there was like no music and they let the dialogue carry that little scene tells me I have a feeling that's going to come up again. I have a feeling Sirius is going to have feel some sort of way about Katarina. We'll, we'll see what that is i guess like but again i just wanted to zero in on that so if a couple episodes later sirius does some wild shit i could be like aha i knew something was up i felt the flags i have a feeling sirius sirius up to something i don't know what but that look i don't know i don't trust that look i don't trust sirius d <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, anyway, so we move on. And Maria is still 
too shy to really connect with the other the other members of the the Otome game, the other members of the cast. And in fairness, it makes a whole lot of sense why Maria wouldn't feel comfortable talking with them because when you think about it, she is a commoner. Like we love Maria, it's just, even though she was only introduced the other episode, but I'm, I feel it's safe to assume that we all love Maria. Thing is, she is just a commoner and the other members of the cast are all nobles. So it, it's obviously, and not, not only are they nobles, they are like the highest of the high nobles. You know, like this is like the cream of the crop, the tippity top of the, the noble pyramid. And Maria is like the busy bottom of said pyramid, so it's it's weird for her. She's still shy, feels it's almost inappropriate to really interact much with Katarina outside of the student council room. And obviously this kind of breaks Katarina's heart a little bit because she wants to hang out with Maria quite a bit and also keep an eye on her so that all routes don't lead to doom. And it makes a lot of sense. And again, it's it's character writing and, and story beats that make a lot of sense. It's still a comedy. This is a comedy comedy show series at heart, but it still has that heart and it has a strong central narrative, which I really appreciate. I'm not a fan of like all out comedies. That's really not my genre. But when you, you're able to blend comedy with something like an isekai, but also like a, a, a sort of like magic high school type setting, like, yeah, I'm going to be a little bit more invested, especially if you keep a focus not only on the story, but make it character driven. Yeah, I'm all in. And I do love the fact that the, the show establishes, yeah, of course, Maria is not just going to saunter up to these characters and start chit chatting them up like nothing's wrong. It, there is a social barrier between them that has to be broken by Katarina and crew. And this eventually does happen when Katarina yet again jumps in for the save, defending, defending our girl from a group of nefarious ne'er-do-wells. And these girls can officially jump off the nearest cliff. <laughs> Just absolute jerks. One of them going so far as to threaten Maria with fire magic. Like, th this was the day that the Fire Nation attacked and then Katarina just said no. <laughs> Katarina said, no, take this small bump in the road as my magic attack. Years of magic built up to make a small bump in the dirt. Eat it. I mean, in fairness, it works. It trips the girl up and then Katarina has this big savior moment, accidentally stealing Keith's moment, which I do find to be a little bit funny. I do think the idea that she's stealing all these characters' moments is really goofy and funny and again, in service to the narrative, which I appreciate. I still think it would have been more fun if you turned Gerald into the villain, like if Gerald actually did fall for Maria, which uh, by the way, I am never reading the comments on any videos again, because every time I read the comments is people tell me how stupid I am. I know I'm stupid, I don't need reminders. But yeah, it was people saying that Gerald uh, wasn't in love with Maria. And yeah, I guess he wasn't. You have to call me stupid, though. hurt my feelings. <laughs> but anyway, it was it, it, like, I would have liked it if that was where the narrative went, is if Gerald was like, had fallen for Maria, but Katarina stole his big moment, so she'll never fall for him. But he's fallen for her, so he becomes the villain. Like he becomes the Katarina of the story. Cause I'm like, of, of all the characters, I do love the cast, but of all the characters, if you had to make one break bad, I would be okay with it being Gerald because Gerald strikes me as the character who could e the most easily break bad and I don't think anybody would be upset because it would just like add a new layer to his character so I was a little bit disappointed that that wasn't the case um, but not only has she stolen Gerald's moment she's also stolen Keith's moment both good signs and it's it's something that Katarina is going to keep an eye on while she hangs out with Maria, which I think is a good idea. But you know what? I'm just going to speed through the rest of the episode because I want to get to this part. Okay, so Katarina decides to spend her time off. Um, like she, they have a day off and Maria goes home to visit her mom. And Katarina decides that she's going to go uh, pretend to be a merchant's daughter and check out some farming areas uh, and learn from some of the farmers there. And it's, it's a really cool moment. Keith goes with her. It's really sweet. But the reason why this is important is because, of course, they stumble across Maria's hometown, this sort of commoner village, and they, uh, they meet Maria's mom. And Maria's mom, let's just go ahead and, and talk about the big thing of this episode. Maria's mom, she strikes me as a bit of a space case when we see her, right? Maria's like uh, hanging up some laundry on a wire and uh, she's like kind of like taking in the sun. She looks over and she sees her mom and the mom is staring at her with this really sort of blank 
expression. Again, a, a sort of serious deek <laughs> uh, expression where she just, like, you can't read her emotions. Like, sh she's distant. And you don't really know why until later on in the episode. And you notice, like, there's no dad. Maybe he's out working. No, it's that he's gone. And that's the, the part of the episode that really surprised me, is that they tell the story of Maria's childhood through vignettes. They don't really feel the need to verbally, like, word diarrhea at you the backstory. It's shown to you through little vignettes. Like, they don't have to say, and then my dad left because he thought that I was, uh, he thought that my mom had an affair with a noble. Like, no, you just kind of get that idea through vignettes, through, believe it or not, story, like, visual storytelling in a visual medium. Wow! Fascinating! Yeah, I know, I wish more stories did this. But I was just so, so impressed with how they handled Maria's backstory, and I was, like, moved to tears at one, one point, when they established that Maria, like when she developed this magic, it really threw her world into whack, since most commoners don't develop magic. And her mom, her mom's relationship with her father gets like is totally strained and ruined. And Maria is in this weird predicament where the other townsfolk just don't, like the, the children, like the other like adults think she's like the, the bee's knees. Like she's just, they think she's the coolest, but they also use her as sort of like a gossip type of situation where she's like the center of a lot of gossip in this small town, which again, it's a small commoner's village. Of course she'd be the center of gossip. Like of course she would. And it, it's, it breaks your heart because you see Maria trying to get people to notice her. And she does that through her baking, the thing that we know connected her to Katarina in the first place. And the, these kids that she starts baking for you and you what I love is again the vignettes show the, the amount of time that it took because you see her like baking and you see like different cookies but like burnt and broken and then slowly getting better and slowly getting better until they're eventually solid cookies yay cookies everybody loves cookies except for uh, the kids in this village because screw these kids uh, because they outright reject Maria and it, it broke my heart and it made so much sense as to why Maria flipped out or not like so much flipped out but like internally was screaming when Katarina liked her sweets and when the other characters liked eating her food because it's what she's wanted to do when she was a kid and it never worked and now it's working and she's actually making friends and seeing her make friends makes her mom it, like it moves her mom to tears because she sees her kid taking up this old skill she taught herself to try to make friends and when it, it didn't work assumedly Maria just stopped baking at the house because you know it just didn't work anymore but then her mom sees her baking again and she looks out the window and sees Maria and Keith or sorry not Maria and Keith Katarina and Keith in the garden fixing their their garden for them and her mom has just moved to tears and and Maria's mom goes and gets the old like equipment like the old like cookie cutters and gives them to Maria and I'm not gonna lie to you guys I, I definitely cried. I was really emotional because I was like, oh my God, like this is so good. It's such good storytelling. It's such good visual storytelling. I was so happy. There's this little shot at the end too where the two of them, like, like the mom and daughter just kind of like look at each other and they just smile and oh, it's so good. Protect Maria, like Maria Protection Squad. Can I get some Maria Protection Squad in the chat slash comments, I guess. <laughs> and it's especially funny too, by the end of the episode, when you compare Maria and her mom <laughs> to Katarina and her mom. Because Katarina and her mom, you know they have like an interest, like they have a good dynamic because like Katarina's mom obviously cares about Katarina. She wouldn't be freaking out the way that she is <laughs> if she didn't but she's way more strict <laughs> with Katarina because of course she has to be. They, they are nobles of high standing. So when she hears like, wow, Katarina, that's a really interesting outfit you have on there. You know, I heard a funny rumor about a farm at your school. You want to talk to me about something? <laughs> I love it. I, I, I love the mother-daughter dynamics in this episode. I just love this episode in general. Easily my new favorite episode of the series. Goddamn. With that said, everybody, I'm going to wrap up my thoughts here. I have a podcast that I need to go get ready for, but question of the day today, muffins or cookies? 
let me know in the comments. And that's gonna do it for today's video, everybody. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, then by all means, hitting that like button and leaving a comment down below is a great way to help out this channel as it pleases the almighty YouTube algorithm. So if you choose to do so, kudos to you. And if you're feeling extra supportive today, you can go ahead and check out all the links in the description. Uh, one goes to my Twitter, another one is to our Discord server, another one to our merch store if you feel like grabbing yourself a mug, and of course, our Patreon page. And speaking of the Patreon page, I do want to give a big thank you to those of you in the T-Squadron who support this channel month to month. Let's go ahead and do the Earl Grey shoutouts. Izevi, Andrew W, Branson C, Bria Rose, Calvin A, Crowbar of Irony, Daniel G, Digger the Fox, Dominic G, Emily, Ionos, Urza, Ginkotaku, Godzilla Fan, No For Nothing, Maria T, Marshall B, Mater, Mirth Mouser, Cell, Shadow Creative, Steven G, Sakochi, The Suavest Orange, Tristan G, and Veridan. Thanks so much for your continued support over on Patreon, everybody. And if you too would like to join the T-Squadron, then be sure to check out the first link in the description to check out our Patreon page. That is a huge way to support the channel. And again, be sure to check out the other stuff in the Discord as well. Go join our Discord. It is now public. You can all join. Everybody can hop in the Discord. Follow me on Twitter if you want me to ramble at you even more. And until next time, you stay classy, Anytube, and wash your dang hands.